So as we walk on this little trail on the side of this clay hill, we see on this trail clay, 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 clay. The theory is that this hill is the, the hill where the clay to make the pyramids and to make all these structures, the Temple of Mother Earth as well, was taken from. So let's see if this is just a pure clay hill and that, that will help to confirm that theory. Okay, so this is very interesting. As we're climbing up this hill, which is purported to be clay, it looks like we found a little gully. And the gully has lots of stones in it. Very interesting. And not just little stones either, but big stones. This is unexpected. And this is a textured stone right here. This is busting the theory a little bit because the theory was this was just a clay hill and was not a structurally supported hill. It was not a stone structure and clay structure hill. And there's another stone with texturing on it. Textured stones. Look at this thing. Huh. Wow. Bizarre texturing on that one. This is more standard for the texturing that they do. If they made all these stones, think of the amount of work that was. And you can see the texturing right there from the side very easily. Absolutely incredible. And why they would put make it texturing. If you're heating up clay to make stones, it'd be so much easier to just let the clay sit, right? And love and it would naturally level out immediately. Hot clay would just level out just like water would level out, but they're making this incredible texturing. Absolutely amazing. Let's uh continue up this gully. So that's another large stone that has texturing on the top. So all of these So there you can see this and you say, "Oh, well that's just a natural feature." Well, it could be could be, but then when you start to see all of the stones looking the same from structure to structure to structure, and the stones are placed in alignment with each other, so they're clearly artificially placed, and then the only question is, are they artificially made? Well, then you come to a stone like this, and you say, wow. You say, wow, wow, wow. Because that is very interesting. Huh. I just, wow, I'm just amazed. I didn't know there was anything like this. Interesting texturing again. Uh, let's get a photo of that. And there's this massive thing here. I did not expect to find anything like this. Based on the idea, which is a very sound idea, I thought, the idea that this was just a clay hill Oh, here's this texturing. And that's just like the stones, those huge, huge clay stone, heated clay uh, blocks over on the, the lower trench in the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. They have this texturing. I'm impressed. <laughs> I was impressed before, but now I'm really impressed. There's pattern everywhere. It's just a question of noticing or figuring out what the pattern is. So we got this stone that's on its side, kind of, 45 degree, but then look at this texturing. Look at that. Very interesting. This huge stone. I mean, it's... Look at this. Look at this thing. It's just clay. Look. It's just clay. Look. It's just clay. So they heated this clay up. And they made it strong. I mean, this, this, this is strong. A little tiny bit came off, but I mean, that's... 10 inches there, more than that there, 11 inches. Nice long, thin stone. Amazing. Then you got this huge 
lock. Oh, and now there's two gullies, okay. So there's this gully, and here's, you can see this, the, the idea of the claystone. Uh, my friend Helena from the Czech Republic was looking at some stones in the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon, and I said, I think these are artificial, and what do you think they're made of, if that's true? And she said, well, it's, they look like sandstone, and then she said, well, they look like claystone, and then she said, well, I think they're sandstone. So it was back and forth between clay and sand. She, she was perplexed. She's had some training in this. But the more that I look at these stones, the more it looks like clay. So there's two converging gullies, and you kind of got to wonder if, they, if they're modern, in the sense of just they happened over the last 34,000 years just by chance, or if they were made to be gullies for the water, because it looks like th there's this super steep uh, ridge right next to it, like really, really steep and really tall, 12 feet tall, all on this gully. And then there's this one in between the two gullies that's about 6 to 8, and then it gets up to 10, 12, 14 feet tall there. It's like these were built. So now we're in the right-hand gully. It's actually a little easier to get up this one because there's not so much brush. And things are sticking to each other, like the rocks are sticking to the clay, so it's a little easier to walk up it instead of a talus slope which is loose rubble. This is talus plus clay, so here's another textured stone. Let me get, let me get a nice shot of this thing. Wow. Super exciting. You know, the trickling of the water doesn't take much clay. If it's just soil, of course, it'll take it. Wow, look at that stone. You can see the texturing. I mean, it's Absolutely incredible. Let's see if we can hone in on that. Look at that. Amazing. And then the water trickling over this guy doesn't look like it's perturbed it at all. That's, the, that's probably why they heat the clay up to such a high temperature. We know that they heated the concrete up to 900 degrees Fahrenheit. And that's what makes it the hardest, most durable, and most water-resistant concrete ever tested, ancient or modern, on the Pyramid of the Sun. But more than four times the temperature of boiling water is what they brought the clay up to on the Pyramid of the Sun. Over there. So, and they covered it with concrete that, that was heated up to that degree. So, how they did that, no one knows but they really, really, really wanted to make strong concrete. They really wanted that pyramid to stay, whoever it was. And so then you gotta wonder, they probably really wanted these rocks to stay rocks and not disintegrate. So then you say, well, I wonder what temperature these rocks became. The texturing is never identical to texturing on some of the stone. It's just, it has an identical feel, an identical style. See if I can, yeah, look at that texturing. Absolutely crazy. The word for stone in Bosnian is kamen, K A M E N. And I'd like to start a new discipline called commonology, rather regular sides, you know. Uh, 90 ish degrees there. It's not necessary to have 90 degree sides to be a construction stone, obviously, but... Uh, uh, there's some more texturing on this guy. Interesting. So this was just supposed to be a clay hill. All right, now we have something interesting. A really huge, really huge rock, and then some more rocks that are large next to it. So let's go find out what those are. Okay, so this is interesting because these look like they're built in, right? I mean, that's, they're in. It doesn't look like they've been perturbed. These look like construction stones to me. And they're angled in. They're always angled in. Look at that. Look at that angle. Really strong. They're angled into the structure. And you hear me talking about that every, almost every video where I have stones in there. I'll talk about the inclined terraces, the Bosnian Pyramid of the Moon. Or the inclined blocks on the Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun. Not the concrete blocks, but the blocks below at the first, uh, at the first level 
uh, the level where the blocks I'm talking about are is probably about there. And then the concrete starts up further. But there's some blocks that are just like this, kind of near the bottom, at least at the bottom trench that we've started excavating. And they are inclined, just like this. So I'm going to get a few photos of this incredible inclination. Make sure my camera is flat so we know generally what the inclination is. Wow. Okay, now we're going to see if we can get up. Look at this gorgeous texture. You can see the clay right here. If I just, I can flick this off, but I'm not gonna because it's just too, this whole thing is too beautiful. Absolutely gorgeous. I mean, wow, look at those markings. Look at those markings, amazing. Huh, I'm gonna get closer on that, I think. That's important, I haven't seen that before, but it's, it's got a feeling of, of the same sort of thing going on, it's just a slightly different look. If you're still with me, you're stalwart, this is, this is science. Anyone can do science. And you have to look with your eyes. And that's, that's what you do. And then you do your best to figure things out. That's all. Just because you have a degree from a prestigious university doesn't mean you're right. Because it just so happens that people with degrees from prestigious universities disagree about things all the time. So the question is, what do you see with your eyes? What's your best theory? And then, you know, then you you put that out there to the to the uh, to the scientific audience, and which is to say to the global mind, since we're all scientists, uh, and then we see who which, whose theory is the the theory that does the best in the opinion of the global mind. So this is pretty interesting. This is actually interesting because to me this looks like a gully in the pyramid of the moon. And the gully on the pyramid of the moon has this incredible layering. In other words, it looks like this might have been meant to be a gully. And you can see the water coming down. But the other thing is this might just be a place where randomly the water decided to come down and then it, it sort of laid bare what, what exists everywhere, which is this clay layering. Heated clay, obviously. Here's the, here's the unheated clay that's just on top of it. But then there's this, this stuff. Oh, let's see, there's another textured stone. Amazing. Nice and wet for us so we can get more idea of what the texturing is. So there's, there's clay, soft clay, right? And then there's, huh. And that's, so that's the, that's the soft, like, potter's clay or something. It's a little bit harder than that right now. And then there's the harder, stone clay or clay stone maybe they mix some other ingredients in there besides just heating it up but then look at this then there's a really hard one a really hard one so there's three different kinds right there i was just standing on this thing and we have clear evidence of it being inclined because it's inclined <laughs> it's inclined into the structure i'm sure the pyramids are multifunctional they're also heaters they're they're five degrees Celsius hotter than the surrounding hills. So what you have is a way to keep the ice ages from 
completely destroying everything. Um, that's one, one good thing about pyramids, is that the more you build, the, the warmer the climate is going to be. And there is a Mediterranean climate on these pyramids, and you have plants that grow there that are Mediterranean plants. And that's because the heat is escaping faster from these pyramids than from the surrounding hills, because the pyramids are not compressed over millions of years, but, but have hollow spaces, and they have, we know they have tunnels from satellite scans we've done, and it's, they're just less dense than the surrounding hills, and so they, they, they let heat out faster, which means that they, they, the plants benefit from that, that heat. The ones that like the Mediterranean climate can grow here. I have to honor these crows because they're so awesome. They're like, we are going to let you know what we're thinking. Bosnian Pyramid of the Sun to the right, and the Bosnian Pyramid of Love, a smaller structure, knitted together with the pyramid by a clay and concrete staircase, alternating clay and concrete staircase. And we're here in this incredible gully on a clay hill that we thought was simply clay that was used in ancient times to build the clay and concrete or clay and stone pyramids. But it looks like this is a structure that was also built, a structurally created and structurally strong hill. I mean, wow, they built this thing. Let's keep doing what Robert Schott doesn't want to do, which is real science. He wants to libel and he wants to slander. He wants to defame the foundation whose volunteers Dr. Schock has defamed, does not have time or money or interest in uh, a court battle. But they could, they could go to court, they could take Schock to court, and they could win. Uh, and the win would be hollow. So let's uh, continue to do science. Let's look at textured stones close up, because we, we decided to take a chance and uh, check something out that we thought was one thing but turned out to be another. It's exciting. Maybe there's some science to do in your hometown. Maybe your hometown is not what you've been told. Maybe the geologists in your hometown are, are like the geologists here in, in Bosnia who said that there's nothing here. <laughs> there can't be pyramids here. It's just natural. And they've said that for 10 years. The experts have said that. So if they said that about this complex, this, this, this area where there's a pyramid complex that's an estimated 34,000 years old, who knows what's in your hometown? Maybe there's a pyramid complex in your hometown that's 64,000 years old. It's an exciting time. Uh, we're just at the beginning of understanding our past and the past of our planet. This is Jock Doubleday reporting, uh, exploring, uh, having a good time, playing, because science is playful, here in the Bosnian Valley of the Pyramids in the heart of the Balkans. It's March 3rd, 2015. Have a scientific day. So I got to show you this. This is the first time I've ever seen a full uh, view of the of the Temple of Mother Earth. It's always blocked in some way. The left side is blocked or the right side is blocked or the bottom of it's blocked from the by the trees, the houses. Uh, so you can see the concave structure. We're inside the concave uh, curve. It's crescent shaped. Huge, huge structure. Nothing like it on the planet as far as we know. It's the first time. So Dr. Semir Osmanagic, who discovered it, said, hey, this is not a natural feature. This is artificial, and I'm going to call it the Temple of Mother Earth. And I think it's a great name. Uh, it's made of clay, so it is made of earth. And it's also made of structural stones. And we know that because uh, along the side of it have been found structural stones that, that incline into the structure. 